Hi, I'm Kirsty Harms. I am the Executive Director of the Native Prairies Association of Texas, and I'm here on our Lothar Deer Park Prairie doing a fall walk. It's October, and as you can see, the goldenrod are in full bloom, and we've got fields of swamp sunflower. There's a heavy dew right now. It's morning, um, and we'll take you uh, for a little tour of all our grasses, which fall is a great time to look at our grasses. Native prairies are a mix of grasses and flowering plants. Our Lothar Deer Park Prairie has over 300 species of plants. Remnant prairies have a high level of native plant diversity. Those plants have been there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Because of this high biodiversity, prairies are able to feed all the insects and animals that live there or come to visit. This biodiversity also assures that the prairie can survive natural disasters. The Native Prairies Association of Texas is working to preserve and restore prairies across the state of Texas. We also work to help people understand why they are important. They're a part of our natural heritage. Deer Park Prairie has a lot of grasses. It also has the big four prairie grasses. Those include big blue stem, yellow Indian grass, switchgrass, and little blue stem. It also has a pink blooming grass that's called Gulf Muley. Big blue stem is one of the four big four prairie grasses. And the, one of the other names for big blue stem is turkey foot because it looks like it has feet when it blooms. And it's a very tall prairie grass. You can tell that it's, a, it's as tall as I am. So this is the, one of the tall big four prairie grasses. It's a switchgrass and it gets very tall too, just like big blue stem. Little blue stem is probably called that because it is kind of a blue-green color when it comes up in the spring. The blades of grass are kind of a sagey green. But in the fall, it starts to turn kind of a copper color when it blooms and goes to seed. And those fluffy white things you see coming out of it are actually the seeds. One of the best times to study grasses is in the fall because that's when a lot of our native grasses are in bloom and it's easier to tell what they are. One of the common coastal prairie grasses is Gulf Muley. It turns into waves of pink in the fall. This grass is very hard to photograph because it's so delicate. This grass here is bushy blue stem and you can tell why it's called that because it looks pretty bushy. Usually it likes to have its feet wet, so it grows in wetter areas. Even grasses have flowers. If you look close, you can see the flowering parts when they're in bloom. Grass flowers are called inflorescences. This flower is from eastern gamma grass. It's a large grass that grows on prairies too. It likes wet areas and it is a distant relative of corn. Prairies have many grasses and plants that have really deep roots. They go way down into the soil. This is important because when it rains, prairies can absorb a lot of water and help prevent flooding. They also help filter water because the water is run through the ground instead of eroding off the top. The coastal prairies are very important because the coast gets a lot of rain and there can be serious flooding events. It's early October and we found that the swamp sunflowers are in full bloom all over the place. This is one of the fall blooming asters. Flowers in the aster or sunflower family often look like some kind of daisy. What looks like one flower is actually made up of a bunch of small flowers. Texas has a lot of flowers that are in this plant family. Prairies can also look very golden in the fall. That's usually because of the fall blooming asters. Many of them are yellow. This is the giant ragweed. As you can tell, it's big. But the flowers 
are not big. They're small. You can hardly even see them. But there are little flower parts there. So when this is in bloom, usually the goldenrod is in bloom as well. And people think that's what's making them sneeze. But really, this is what's making them sneeze. Um, and the difference between these two flowers is ragweed is wind pollinated. The pollen is in the air and it's probably getting up your nose and in your eyes. Whereas goldenrod, it's insect pollinated. That's why it's got a flower and a scent and a color and it's meant to attract insects. The pollen, even though if you stuck your nose right in it, you probably might sneeze, but the pollen is not flying around in the air like the ragweed pollen is. Gay Feather or Prairie Blazing Star puts on a big show in late summer and fall. It's also in the aster family, but it blooms kind of a purple lavender color, and it is very popular with insects. This little blue flower is a salvia, which is a sage is the common name. And salvia azurea is one of the prairie fall blooming salvias. Plants in the mint family, like this bush mint that blooms in the fall, have square stems and they're often very aromatic. Sometimes if you look way down in the prairie, you'll see some little short plants. This is called frog fruit. It is a really nice ground cover. It will work in your yard in a certain amount of shade. It stays low to the ground and insects like it. Prairies aren't just gold. They also have pink and purple flowers. Sometimes they're a little more hidden and you have to look for them. The common name of this white flower is bee blossom, probably because insects love this flower and it looks a little bit like a butterfly. This is downy lobelia. It's one of the plant species that is at risk of extinction in the coastal prairie ecosystem. Much of the original coastal prairie has disappeared to development and agriculture. Of the original 9 million acres, less than 1% remains. That's why it's important to save the prairies that exist today. The name of this plant is Rattlesnake Master. If you see these growing in a field, you're probably looking at a native prairie and one that's never been plowed. It's also very attractive to insects. It is a very good plant for pollinators. This plant is called Snow on the Prairie. It blooms in late summer in parts of Texas, especially on prairies and pastures, and it can create fields of white flowers that look like snow. The many plants that are native to our coastal prairies, while they are very beautiful, are actually extremely important to our native insect and pollinator populations. There is a lot of concern about the rapid decline of our insects. Native Texas prairies are often at their best from late summer into fall. The plants that bloom during this time help feed our insects, and those include the migrating monarch butterflies. Texas is in the pathway of the migrating monarch butterfly as it heads to Mexico in the fall. So all these aster family plants, like this goldenrod, are extremely important for them as a food source. Our native insects and pollinators have evolved with our native coastal prairie plants over thousands of years. These insects have adapted to the nectar, pollen, sap, and the defensive chemicals that are created by the plant. This leaf-footed squash bug gets his nourishment by sucking the sap from a plant. Plants that are native to other continents, like many of our popular landscape plants, are not good food sources for our native butterflies, bees, and other insects. When they encounter these landscape plants in our yards, such as this crepe myrtle, they are encountering a food desert. So in order to protect our pollinators, it is important to supplement your yard or school landscape with a few native plants. You don't need a large area to create a pocket prairie, and they can serve as a science class on your school campus. Mm -hmm. 
Most of our native bees don't live in hives. They are often solitary and they live in the ground or in old wood. And most don't sting while they are foraging for nectar or pollen, such as this carpenter bee on agara flower. Honeybees, which are from Europe, they often sting to protect their young in the hive, so don't disturb them. If you're out on the prairie on a dewy morning, like Deer Park Prairie is very dewy in the morning sometimes, you'll be able to see how many spiders live on the prairie, because you can see their webs when they're covered in dew. I actually love looking at spider webs in the dew. Deer Park Prairie is kind of a wet prairie, so you'll often see dragonflies in a bunch of different colors flying around over the prairie. They hover over the prairie because they are hunters, and they will often kill pest insects like mosquitoes. This is the adult Gulf Fritillary butterfly feeding on a blue mist flower. This flower is very popular with butterflies. The Gulf Fritillary is a very common butterfly sighting in the fall at Deer Park Prairie. The top of his wings look very different than the underside, as seen here feeding on the nectar of a red sage flower. Here you see the Gulf Fritillary in both instar and caterpillar stages. This caterpillar feeds exclusively on the native passion flower or passion vine. So now you've seen a prairie in bloom, you've seen the insects that feed on the flowers in the prairie. So what's next? Well, all those flowers go to seed or they produce berries. Those become food for birds and other small animals that live on the prairie. Texas prairies, like a lot of other natural areas around the world, have different groups of birds that are around at different times of year. The resident birds at Deer Park Prairie can usually find something to eat at any time of year. Another group of birds are our summer resident birds. They come in the spring, they breed, and then they leave in the fall to go south. They often eat insects, so that's why they're here in the summer. Some of the most obvious summer birds are the scissor tail flycatchers. You can see them in grassland areas in the summertime. Texas has a lot of birds that come down for the winter. These birds migrate from their breeding grounds in the north as far as Canada. The seeds and fruit from all those flowers on Texas prairies provide food for grassland birds, especially sparrows like this Leconte sparrow and this savanna sparrow. To provide good habitat for wildlife, including birds, you'll need to provide water, food, and shelter. Raptors are also known as birds of prey. They hunt other animals, including birds. The daytime raptors include hawks, eagles, and falcons. The nighttime raptors are owls. Some raptors can be seen year-round at Deer Park Prairie, like red-shouldered hawks and the red-tailed hawk. Some raptors are there mostly in the wintertime, like the northern harrier that hunts by cruising low over the prairie, or the American kestrel, which is also known as a sparrow hawk because it hunts small birds. We hope you can make it out to Deer Park Prairie some fall so you too can see the flowers and the grasses in bloom and the insects that like to visit them, as well as the birds that come to live there in the wintertime. We hope to see you soon.